Um, this is a recording of upper GI bleeding for some man case. The task says that uh, there is a man who is aged up to 60 years old. He was brought to the hospital by his wife because he is fainting and he has dizziness. Talk to the patient and you will find nurse colleague in, with the patient inside the cubicle. Okay. Uh, so when you ask the patient at the beginning, you will uh, greet yourself and uh, look at the monitor, look at the patient three, uh, talk to the patient. The patient is talkative and quite conscious here in this case. So you will ask the patient simply first, how can I help you, doctor? I'm feeling dizzy and I am about to faint. Okay, first question you'll ask him, what do you mean by dizzy? He will tell you, doctor, actually I feel like I'm about to fall, but I don't. Ask him when did it start, how did it start, and brief elaboration of the dizziness. He will tell you that the dizziness started like uh, maybe yesterday and it's getting worse since yesterday. It started all of a sudden and it has been continuous and nothing changed it at all and uh, when he stands up it gets worse and nothing makes it better so this is for the dizziness what about the fainting um, he tells you that I'm feeling weak when I'm trying to stand up this means that probably this patient has problem with standing up so this means that this patient has problem with the blood pressure okay uh, so uh, he will tell you that this fainting or this feeling of fainting started uh, together with the dizziness and it started suddenly um, and nothing changed it. Okay. Um, do you have anything else? He might tell you that he is having also shortness of breath. And this shortness of breath started together with the dizziness and fainting and it has been continuous and it didn't, it didn't change at all. And he is also feeling weak. So all these findings point you toward anemia, anemia which could be due to many reasons. What is the acute anemia? Acute anemia which started yesterday or two days ago is most probably because of internal bleeding. Okay, we will get to know right now. So uh, do you have anything else apart from that, apart from shortness of breath and tiredness and weakness plus dizziness and fainting? Um, no, doctor. No, I don't have anything else. Um, by any chance, any tummy pain, he will tell you no. Any heartburn, no. Any loss of appetite, no. Did you have any bleeding anywhere in your body? Well, sometimes he tells you yes, doctor, and sometimes he says no. Why I'm asking him about bleeding? Because now I know that acute anemia could be, uh, could be caused by bleeding. So uh, if he says no, I will tell you in a while what he what will happen, but if he says yes, he will tell you, doctor, I am passing black stool since two days, and it has been the same. Okay. So if he this is if he says yes, so if he says yes and told you about the black stool, this means that now you know that this is melina due to upper GI bleeding. Okay, or melina due to GI bleeding generally, but if he tells no. After a while, he will tell you, doctor, actually, you know, I don't know what happened. I'm feeling unwell. I'm so embarrassed. I passed dark stool, and this is the second time. Yesterday, it happened to me as well. And you will find your nurse colleague saying, I will take care of that, don't worry. And she will show you a nappy from behind the same man, and it will be showing a black colored stool. Okay, so now you in, in either cases, you know that this patient is having GI bleeding, melina. Okay, move to the past medical history. He will give you a history of osteoarthritis for which uh, since long time for which he is receiving ibuprofen. But he started taking ibuprofen more frequently these days because the pain was not well controlled. Ask him about any other symptoms like any bleeding problem, any kidney problem, any liver problem. No, nothing else is significant or conclusive and the patient used to smoke but he stopped and he doesn't drink alcohol and he follows healthy balanced diet. At any point while you are taking history, the vitals may drop. If the vitals drop, you already knew that this patient is having a hypotension most probably due to GI bleeding. And here, after osteoarthritis, you will get to know that it is due to probably peptic ulcer or due to upper GI bleeding generally. So move to the monitor. You will find you will address it as A, B, C, D, E, as we agreed before. Uh, you will find the oxygen quite normal, but most probably 
you have to uh, say that my patient speaking so the airway is patent and the oxygen is normal quite normal so you need to listen to the chest even um, here but the problem is that the blood pressure is low if the blood pressure is quite low here or is deteriorating this means that the patient is bleeding so i need to follow the hypovolemic shock protocol i will ask my nurse colleague to attach two white bull cannulas to my patient which cannula doctor orange and if orange is not present gray and from one cannula take some samples like uh, full blood count lfts and kfts too and uh, blood group and cross matching for units of blood and to the other side attach one liter of pre-warmed heart to end solution uh, over 15 minutes okay the blood pressure is improving right now if it's not or if it's still not normal you can attach another one liter to the other side too okay uh, what's your next step doctor uh, the next step is that here the blood pressure is the only problem so i may need to examine the tummy i will expose uh, the patient and ensure privacy and chaperon do just superficial palpation you may or may not go get any tenderness here okay we need also to do some investigations which investigations we have done them by taking the blood sample I mean all the investigations will be full blood count LFTs and KFTs and full uh, and blood grouping and cross matching for units of blood. Okay, what's the next step? I corrected the blood uh, pressure, so now I need to correct the coagulopathy like any hypovolemic shock. For the coagulopathy, we give fresh, fresh frozen plasma with or without vitamin K. And if the bleeding or if the blood pressure didn't improve or deteriorate, I may consider giving blood transfusion to my patient. And later on, I will, co I will inform my senior and the medical team and we will move the patient to endoscopy. So now I did the initial management, which is the ABCD. After the ABCD and correcting the coagulopathy and blood transfusion, I will do the definitive management by calling my senior and arranging the patient for endoscopy why uh, the patient will ask you doctor why endoscopy doctor okay because you're having a condition called uh, acute upper gi bleed you had this because probably you have been taking painkiller for long and such painkiller may cause ulcer and bleeding in the lining of the stomach and that's why you had this doctor but i don't want to stay at hospital ask him why he will tell you any reason for example i need to take care of my children tell him that we can arrange a carer for them However, we need you to stay in hospital because we need to perform endoscopy through which we can find the cause of bleeding and even treat it too. If he still insists, you can talk to him about the complications and he will continue bleeding and this may have fatal complications. And he will accept staying in hospital and you will tell him about the endoscopy and that's it. So this is the station so far and it's more, almost like history based station.